Damn! Archaeologists found 76 child sacrifices over there in Peru. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. 76 kids. Could you imagine that? Like, living in a society to where... Ah, uh, you would openly open up the chest of little kids and rip out their organs with hope that some kind of a rain god would show up and make their corn grow bigger. Or, I don't know, maybe they were hoping that next year's cotton candy harvest would be the ultra harvest for all time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. I don't know if they grew cotton candy over there. I have no idea. But we know that they're at the very least were child sacrifices. You know what's interesting though? Right now the mainstream tells us that all of these children were all essentially sacrificed in with the mindset that a god would be pleased. Generally speaking, I'm not saying that for every single example, but when you think about Mayan sacrifices or, you know, whatever culture down there, because don't remember, there's all kinds of cultures down there in South America. It's not just the Mayans, the Aztecs, uh, maybe a few people remember the Olmecs. Now, there's all kinds of cultures down there. It's not, anyway, you get, you get the point. Uh, but what's interesting is that even though, yes, I mean, obviously people were being sacrificed, that's what the Spanish explorers actually immediately ran into when they bumped into these guys. That's a fascinating story in and of itself, right? Spanish explorers show up, uh, the Mayans believe that the Spanish are gods, that are, you know, the, the promised returning white people that are supposed to come back. Uh, the people who their ancestors used to live with. Yeah, that, that whole situation is absolutely crazy. And, of course, nowadays, we're essentially not allowed to talk about it. But uh, I digress anyways. That's not, that's not the point of this talk. So, archaeologists, they recently made a discovery uh, down there in Peru where 76 children are apparently sacrifice victims and they were all found buried in a particular mound. Now, that in and of itself is not all that interesting simply because we have uh, sacrifice victims all over the place down there. So that's not necessarily like an interesting thing. Uh, however... The crazy thing about this find is not just the unfortunate victims, but apparently a lot of these children had elongated skulls. Now, this is where things can get weird, and it's funny because the article itself, while it's not very long and there's not a lot of information, so I'm sorry, but we have a lot of stuff we could talk about around it. Uh, even the article itself just kind of mentions the elongated skull situation in passing. Like, they don't say anything else about it. It's not interesting to them. There's no significance about this. It's just a bunch of children who were sacrificed by the Mayans in Peru, and that's just normal. Don't worry about it. Oh, and by the way, a lot of them had elongated skulls. But, you know, it's, it's just typical down there. It's not, a, it's not a fascinating find. It doesn't mean anything. We are just going to turn a blind eye to the discovery and continue to act as if there is not a problem or potentially something incredibly interesting happening here. Right, that, that is what archaeologists do. They just don't care. They have this amazing evidence right in front of them, and all it gets is literally one sentence in this whole article. It's absolutely insane. Now, I, okay, I know, I get it. Before we go further, I understand that things can get a little weird with the concept of people with elongated skulls because, well, let's be honest. The only reason why people get weird about this topic is because they have been taught to act weird when this situation rises up. For example, you know, in, in, in anthropology, in mainstream anthropology, you are not allowed to talk about any of these findings in any professional sense whatsoever. Otherwise, you're going to be excommunicated from the high priesthood of anthropology. And this is admitted, by the way. 
There are anthropologists who have come out and they have straight up said, you know, the, the elongated skull situation, it's, it's a legitimate problem. Like this is an actual anthropological issue. But if you try to study it at all, if you try to make any kind of a headway out of any of the scientific evidence that has been dredged up over the past century or so, you know, you, you're not allowed to continue anymore in academia. You are immediately kicked out. The, this, that right there is a huge red flag. Like, what? that's not how science works. That is not how academia is supposed to work. The very second you find a situation to where you are not allowed to engage in scientific research or discussion with respect to a topic, that's all the evidence that you really do need to prove that whatever institution you are engaging with is a fraudulent entity. And we have that everywhere in history and science. We are not allowed to do real history or real science at that mainstream academic level. And there's a few reasons for this. Like right now, I could have just said, they don't want us to know. And then you could have shot back and said, okay, schizo, yeah, who is they? And then, of course, you know, we can go down that rabbit hole and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the, the main point is, is that for whatever reason, there really is a concerted effort in mainstream academia to not engage in topics like what we're looking at today. I mean, if you're going to find dozens of elongated skull child sacrifice victims, I mean, that's got to mean something. I, th there's got to be more going on here than just, you know, random Mayans, you know, cradleboarding their children's skulls and then killing them for fun. You know, things are not that simple. I, when you make a finding like this, you would think that this would be actually something fairly impressive. That you would pay attention to the elongated skull part. But what they do, of course, is they just hand wave it away. Like I said, in this article, there's literally like half a sentence dedicated to this very specific and important scientific aspect of this discovery. You cannot just, okay, all right, all right, all right. So I understand, okay, I get it. Like the, the elongated skull topic, this is a hot one because you know, even if you are in the alternative research community, you're probably fairly open-minded, but there's a good chance that there's going to be some topics that you are just not really going to budge on. For example, you might believe aliens built the pyramids, but if I tell you there's no such thing as an ice age, I'm the schizo, right? Same thing with the elongated skull people, right? They're everywhere all over this planet. This is a fact of life. But, you know, like I said, even people on the alternative side might might have to be like, nah, wait, wait, wait. These, It's just cradle boarding. You know, our ancestors were stupid monkeys. They believed in gods. So of course they cradle braided, uh, cradle boarded their children, right? And, and nobody wants to go further than that. Not nobody, but those kinds of people are not interested in looking further than that for the simple reason that if if there is something more to the elongated skull situation uh, that means that all of history has to change and that is scary to people and i understand it you know i get it you know humans are not all that much interested in change, especially change that would completely rewrite the foundation of who they believe that they are, and it would rewrite the foundation of the world that you believe you live in right now. I mean, for example, if in the past, and I don't mean that long ago, but if in the past, only a couple of thousand years, what if humans, in the way we know them right now, you know, you and me listening to this, unless you are a reptilian from Alpha Beta Zentari 3, then yes, contact me, and we can do an interview, and you can call me schizo for believing that you exist. Ah, just kidding. Oh, ah, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, change and how humans are afraid of it. Anyway, the, the concept of the possibility that our ancestors were not alone biologically relative to possible other hominids that may have existed only a few thousand years ago, it's a very scary concept to a lot of people. 
Uh, it's a it's a kind of a crazy concept, of course, to religious people because there are no, as far as I'm aware, there are no elongated skull people in the Bible. Now, I'm happy to be wrong about that, for example. Or in anybody's, re well, I guess not anybody's religion. Yeah, okay, for example, the Abrahamic religions. So far as I'm aware, there's nobody in there with an elongated skull. Uh, and I'm not saying that's a fact, by the way, because I am not a Bible expert. I just don't think I've ever heard anybody really talk about it. Uh, actually, I would love it if anybody does know of a legit case of an elongated skull Bible character. Yeah, let me know. I'd, I'd actually be curious to see if that's a possibility. Uh, but with respect to other people's religions... Oh, well, I mean, for example, in Egypt, if we go over there and we look at Akhenaten, right? Ak Akhenaten, Akhenaten... You know, that dude. That dude looks crazy as hell, right? I mean, that guy's got the elongated skull. He's got, you know, his wife's got elongated skull. She wears the hat. Akhenaten's wife, by the way, is Nefertiti, right? So you've got that bust over there. Akhenaten is a whole other crazy character as well, by the way. Because there's a, well, there's actually scholarship that says that he may never have actually existed. And that all of the stuff that we have for him is actually supposedly potentially um, forgeries. They're, they're just mock-ups. They were never actually, they never existed back in the day. A anyway, that's a side thing. I'm not saying that's the case. It's just interesting that there's those kinds of perspectives out there. Uh, but you have, so you have Akhenaten over there, elongated skull dude. He's got little elongated skull babies jumping around him on some of his pictures. Uh, so, you know, that's fascinating. The fact that we have a situation to where in South America, we find all kinds of elongated skull bodies. And then, of course, when we look at other cultures all over the world, we find the same thing. I mean, like I said, in Egypt, it's right in front of us. There's no way around it. I mean, it, the, the Akhenaten thing is actually fairly crazy because... Egyptologists are literally looking at an elongated skull dude and they completely ignore it. Like they don't even think about it. They just say, oh yeah, maybe he had um, some kind of a disease that made him look like a freak, I guess. I don't know. And then they move on. Like they don't care. Nobody stops and is like, wait, 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 wait a second. How the hell are we going to see pictures of some dude, a tall dude apparently, right? Because remember in his pictures, he's pretty damn tall, which is another crazy fact about this situation. Um, but we, we have him looking crazy. We have all these little, little uh, alien elongated skull babies in his uh, hieroglyphics. It, it, you know, this, this is something that should be paid attention to, but nobody cares. I mean, literally, Egyptologists have hand-waved away the whole thing. That's exactly what we find in South America. Now, in South America, or really anywhere, I guess, the, the main excuse why, every, why you find cultures that have done cradle boarding to their babies is simply because they were trying to mimic some kind of a god from their fairy tales, right? They're all stupid monkeys. You know, they, they just took their babies and elongated their skulls because they, I don't know, thought they would be smarter or something, or we, or I don't know, they got to worship a god. You know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Don't pay attention to it. Don't look at the evidence. Just remember that you are crazy if you think anything else is possible. The crazier part about the elongated skull situation is, is that there have been so many finds of elongated skull mummies whose skulls themselves are anatomically literally different than human skulls today. And there's a whole situation with the cranial index and the volume, etc that some of these mummies are not cradle boarded. Now don't get me wrong, there is of course cradle boarded, you know, children, kids, adults, etc. That was going on. But we found a lot of other mummies that legitimately on a biological perspective or from a biological uh, point of view, uh, these these elongated skull mummies they, that's the literally the way they were born they, they were not born you know, they were not born as a regular human and then mom you know did a bunch of crack and then you know elongated the skull that's not what was going on speaking to that point further it's not just the skull's anatomy that is um, biologically different 
the spine is different. The placement of the sagittal suture, sagittal sutures, sagittal sutures. All that stuff is crazy. It, it's a completely different situation over there on some of these mummies. Anyway, I'm not going to get crazy into this, but I just wanted to point out that we really do have a situation to where... <laughs> I mean, it looks like from a scientific perspective, there were a different kind of human walking around on the planet just a few thousand years ago. Now, to corroborate that, our ancestors say the exact same thing. Right? They, they don't, it's not weird to them. There, there were elongated skull people that lived among them in certain areas of the world. But it's all over the world. That's the other part that people really don't remember. It's not just Egypt, Akhenaten, that has, you know, the crazy alien thing going on. It's not just South America. We find elongated skulls everywhere. I mean, this, it's, it's everywhere. Like, and I don't, pff, there's probably not a single continent that does not have an elongated skull discovery. I mean, I would love to see that proved wrong. So far as I'm aware, it's everywhere. It doesn't matter where you go. So why? What, what is this? I mean, what, what the hell is going on? Why do we find a situation to where all over the planet, we have people either cradle boarding their kids, which is already a weird concept in and of itself, by the way, but we also find stories to where there, well, I mean, there quite literally is, it seems, a different species or race of human that was different from you and I. And I, I mean, like, really different. Like, legitimately a different kind of human. I don't mean, oh, he was a little taller than me, or a little darker than me, or whatever. Nothing like that. No, I mean, like, we may have been compatible as far as breeding, but ultimately, if you were to stand next to one of these guys, uh, it would be a, you know, it'd be one hell of an eye-opening experience. I promise you that. They were a different human. They were a different humanoid, apparently. Now, okay, before we go further, I'm not saying this is 100% real, by the way. I, I still need to see more evidence, but there has been a lot of really good scientific evidence that are being done by really good scientists right now uh, who are really starting to prove the possibility that, yeah, man, there literally was a completely different humanoid race on this planet a few thousand years ago, and our ancestors lived with them. And, and there's various stories, you know, we, we have these elongated skull people being uh, evil, we have them being nice. Uh, ultimately, though, the one thing that they all have in common, apparently, seems to be that they were pretty damn smart. So I would imagine that with a bigger, you know, cranial cavity, you would have a bigger brain. And who knows what kind of anatomy that brain structure would have possessed. You know, for all I know, it had, you know, some kind of a psychic organ in there that allowed them to, I don't know, fly around and zap people with lasers out of their eyes. I have no idea. My point is, though, is that they would have been completely different. So, okay, I know the article. So this article, let me, let me, let's just get to the article so I can make fun of the scientists and then we'll go over, we'll go over a couple of points here because this article not only is just an interesting find, um, it actually goes a long way into showcasing how unbelievably corrupt mainstream archaeology is. It, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. I mean, just bonkers. All right, let's do this. All right. The article is titled... An offering to energize the fields. 76 child sacrifice victims, all with their chests cut open, unearthed at burial site in Peru. So right off the bat, these guys have already told us the reason why these children were sacrificed. Now, did they find amazing evidence within this mound? I mean, did they uncover writing that said, yes, we shall slaughter 76 children so that our fields can be energized? No, no, they don't find anything like that at all. Whenever you guys see explanations like this, the vast majority of them are literally just ass pulls. These guys have no actual, 
information that corroborates any of these kinds of conclusions. They are just regurgitating crap that makes sense to them and that they've been taught their entire lives without actually going and talking to any of the locals and listening to any of their mythology, right? So it's just going to be your standard Western, you know, explanation for everything. Everybody's a monkey. They would kill people because they thought the gods would like a death and then the rain would come and everybody's cotton candy fields would be very lush that season. And, you know, ugh. okay, the article goes... A 700-year-old burial mound containing the remains of 76 sacrificed children and two adults, all of whom had their chests cut open, has been found in Peru. The burial mound is the latest of multiple sacrificial sites found at Pampa Le Cruz, near the coastal city of Trejulo in northwestern Peru. And I'm sorry if I am butchering these names. You know, I, what do you want from me? I'm not smart, okay? I don't know what else to tell you. All of the sites are connected to the Chimu, a large civilization that thrived in the region from the 12th to 15th centuries. The Chimu predated the Inca and are known for their artwork and textiles. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to get into how they think they know that. They, there's a whole, there's a lot of problems with this. Okay, anyway. The children were buried naked with their clothes near them. Their chests had been cut open from the collarbone down to the sternum, and their ribs had been forced open, potentially to gain access to their heart. Previous research on other burial mounds at Papa La Cruz suggested. These included a discovery in 2022 of 76 child sacrifice victims. Huh. So they find one burial here with 76, and they found another one with 76. Huh. Uh, we might look at that after this. Okay, that's, that's kind of weird, right? I mean, why would you... Huh. Within the mound, which measures 197 by 66 feet, researchers also found silver and copper squares that might have been sewn into the children's clothing, as well as ear ornaments and spondylus shells. So, I just, okay, let's stop really quick right here. I just want to show how stupid mainstream archaeology is right now. So, these guys are just assuming that these copper and silver squares must have been sewn onto the children's clothing. Even though that is not what they find. Like, they did not find clothing with the squares sewn on. They just don't have another explanation for it. So, it must be that. There is no proof that that is what is going on. And yet we are already getting an assumptive answer that clears the whole thing for us and we do not have to think for ourselves. So don't forget, we actually don't know what the silver and copper squares may have actually meant. Besides, I mean, if you're going to sacrifice a kid, are you just going to throw in precious metal with the bodies? Yeah, I know you could make an argument that, well, that's what the gods demand. All right, now I'll give that to you. That's possible. But is that likely? I, I don't know. Plus, I, you would think that... I don't know, you would think that the mound would have been pillaged. So maybe something else is going on with those squares. Eh, I don't know. All right. Anyway, the spondylus shells were, quote, more valuable than gold for these people, unquote, said Gabriel Prieto, an assistant professor of anthropology at the University of Florida who directs the excavations at Pampa La Cruz. Okay, already we have another red flag. So we have a Western-led university, which is guaranteed to be corrupt, doing archaeology in a foreign country, and this guy is going to be allowed to write the actual ancient history. So we have somebody who is going to be objectively corrupt, following objectively corrupt histories, and he is going to go down there and confirm to the locals his corrupt version of history over the locals own history 
This is like, that's exactly what we see in like everywhere you find Western archaeology, right? Western archaeologists, they've already got a history lined up. So anything they find has to match the preconceived history. They're not going to stop and be like, oh yeah, wait, 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 wait a second, you guys. We just made a discovery that might change everything. We might have to shift the paradigm. That never happens, right? The, the, there's, that's, it's not going to happen, right? So we're just going to get the standard story no matter what these people find. Even more interesting, like I was talking about, you know, robbing uh, the mound for the gold. If this spondylus shell was more valuable than gold... I don't know. You think that maybe those would have been looted. I mean, possibly. So it's kind of interesting to find that these are untouched and unspoiled. That gets kind of rare, you know, nowadays, especially nowadays, right? Because, I mean, there's been now centuries of people that have been wandering around absolutely destroying and stealing everything that they can find with respect to archaeology. So it's interesting that all of this stuff is essentially untouched. It begs the question, what led to a scenario to where that was the case? Just something to think about. I do not have an answer, by the way, right? So I'm just, I'm just throwing out these questions because that's what we're supposed to do as scientists. We are supposed to constantly ask questions until we have figured out what actually is going on. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Where the hell did I leave off at? Uh, this, oh yeah, Gabrielle Prieto, the assistant professor at the University of Florida, who is going to explain to us exactly what happened, even though there is no possible way he could ever do that. But he's going to do it anyway. Okay. The spondylus shells could only be found farther north at that time in the territory of the Lambayaki, a civilization of skilled metalworkers. The presence of the shells was only the first hint of this burial mound's connection to the Lambayaki. Based on further analysis of the other 76 victims found in 2022 at the same site, the researchers determined that all of the victims had cranial modifications in which the malleable skull of an infant was elongated using boards or head wraps. Damn, so I was wrong. All of them are elongated skulls. Holy crap. So these guys found two burial mounds full of 76 bodies each. So was that like 182 bodies of elongated skull children who had been executed? Huh. It, what, is it really something as simple as these people trying to placate a god? Or, I mean, is something else going on? And, and why are they all elongated skull people? It's almost like they were trying to get rid of them? Huh. Uh, that's actually that's kind of another topic as well anyway I uh, see but they're not gonna go into it they're going to say that it's a cranial modification they do not give us any close pictures of any of the skulls so I can't really tell you guys if it's even possible that any of those children that they found were biologically like that or if they were cradle boarded see that's the kind of question and that's the kind of information we should have access to how are you gonna release something like this and not tell us and give us pictures of the damn skulls so that we can figure out what the hell is going on so that the practice of cradle boarding was apparently done by the chimu but to a less extreme degree of modification prieto told live science the higher intensity of cranial modifications suggests that the victims may have been lambayaki in origin and I don't have I not, I don't have a comment on the Lama Yaki. I don't I don't know. The combination of cranial modification and shells led the researchers to investigate the origins of the victims further. The team examined isotopes or variations of elements in the individual's remains. Isotopes in the water and of the diets of these children ended up in the remains providing clues of where the sacrifice victims grew up. Based on a new isotopic analysis, some of the victims came from a large region that encompassed the Lambayaki territory the researchers found.
Now, there's a couple of problems right here as well. So right now, they're already saying that there is a large potential area that these guys could have come from, that these children could have come from. So they cannot pinpoint who the hell these guys actually were. Like, let's just make sure we understand that right out of the door. None of these sacrifice victims had the Chimu like tattooed to their foreheads or something. None of that exists. Like this is all just supposition based on other supposition. The next thing that they're uh, trying to use is the isotopic analysis. There's a problem there as well. These guys are going to compare those isotopes to South America's current uh, geographical and geological situation um, with respect to plants and animals. They are not going to be able to compare this to 700 year ago South America. It's not happening. That's 700 years of change. You better believe that things have changed over the course of 700 years. So these archaeologists or whatever the hell, anthropologists, they have no clue what they're talking about. They're just talking out of their butt just to do it. I mean, they just need to say something so they can sound right. And so that's what they're doing. They do not know where these isotopes technically could have come from because we we do not have that kind of information 700 years in the past. Uh, okay. The children and their families may have been conquered by the Chimu and brought to the site at Pampa La Cruz to build irrigation systems, Prieto suggested. See, it, it's, all just, it's all just guesswork. These guys have no clue, but you watch, you watch. Just this guesswork is going to be taught as fact when it comes to anybody trying to learn about this particular area. These people, anybody who comes and learns about this like 10 years from now, they are not going to be given like, you know, oh, we, we think this is what it is or it might be this. Nope, you are going to get, these were Chimu children, they were cradle boarded, end of story, that is it. And now you have to, be, <laughs> okay, I know, it's just unbelievable, okay. The Chimu were expanding their agriculture into areas that didn't naturally grow crops well, and they needed complex irrigation systems to grow food in the Pampa La Cruz area, according to Prieto. Once again, this dude is literally just making stuff up. I mean, that's it. This guy has no evidence for any of this. This is what he thinks makes sense. And since he has the position of authority, that's what we're gonna get. Ugh. Once these irrigation channels were completed, the children were likely sacrificed to strengthen the land. Based on what? What evidence do you have that that is what happened? Why even write this? They, what they should have done actually in this article, they literally should have just said, we found a bunch of elongated scroll, dead children inside of a mound with open chest cavities and left it at that. There's no reason to say anything else because these guys have no other information to give us. If you have noticed every single thing, every single conclusion that this Prieto guy has come to, uh, he, he's just saying, uh, they were likely this. We think it was like this, etc., etc. They have no actual proof for any of the story of how these children ended up being sacrificed. That matters because we are not going to find the real story if this is the way that the science is being done. Like, it's not possible. If we're already just making stuff up and we're going to believe that, then I mean, pfft, then that's it, right? It's done. There's nothing else to argue. I mean, it, that, that, okay. The children's burial in this mound was possibly an offering to energize the fields, Prieto said. Possibly, mm-hmm. In Indian cosmology, oh, here we go. The dead people become ancestors. The dead people become ancestors. That is a legitimate sentence in this article. The dead people become ancestors. Really? You think our ancestors are dead? Oh, okay. <laughs> and the ancestors legitimize the land rights and justify and support the systems that keep the land producing. 
See, I told you, they've got it all figured out. I don't, I don't even know why they do digging anymore. I mean, why do they waste their time? They already know what's going on. I mean, it's not even interesting to these guys. I mean, they already have the entire story laid out, so there's no reason to find evidence because all the evidence that they find is just going to support whatever the hell they currently believe. And that's a fact. I mean, oh. All right. The fact that these children were likely not of Chimu heritage would have added an extra layer of value to strengthen the lands, Pierreto says. This is the first excavation at this site with evidence of sacrifices of non-locals. Of course, they can't prove they're non-locals, but you know, for the article, let's just roll with it. You know what I'm saying? However, quote, these are not just local towns that are sacrificing their children. Unquote. John Verano, a biological anthropologist at Tulane University and part of the excavation team, told Live Science. Uh, I don't think I... Yeah, Live Science, by the way, is where this article is at. I don't think I gave them credit. <laughs> but I'm giving it to them now. Uh, I'll give them something else, too. Quote. It seems to be controlled by the central government of the Chimu, unquote. There it is again. It seems, right? They don't know anything. Everything in this article is a literal guess, right? I mean, they have no clue who the Chimu, uh, the Chimu was. They have no idea if these children were part of that culture or some other culture. They have no clue if these children were local or not local. They don't know any of this, but the way this article is structured, yeah, it makes it sound like they've got their stuff together. It, it, they don't know anything. I mean, as far as, far as they they know, I mean, anyway, okay. The researchers will investigate this theory by expanding their excavation into Chan Chan, the capital of the Chimu civilization. The research in Pampa La Cruz will also continue. It's opening many, many windows to learn about the Chimu that goes beyond the mere idea of their ritual sacrifice, Pireto said. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're not going to learn anything. They've already got it mapped out. Any piece of evidence that these guys find will just be added to the current zeitgeist. Anyway, I just wanted to go over this article because I thought it was interesting that they found this. And in fact, like, you know, like we saw here, they found two burial mounds, both mounds with elongated skull children, and both mounds had the exact same number of corpses. Now, I'm, I mean, you know, what you would think that the article might mention, hey, you know what, maybe there's something with the number 76. I mean, we're finding similarities to where everybody has an elongated skull. The number is the same. They are all sitting there with their chests ripped open. You know, we find the shells in there. We find the exact same uh, little squares of silver and gold. I don't know. You might think that maybe there's a little more going on here than what they're coming up with. You know, it's, it's funny. Their answers are always the most mundane garbage you can imagine. Like, that's all what it is. Oh, uh, they were just trying to figure out how to farm. But that's it. Like, these people had nothing else going on in their lives other than worshiping gods, killing each other, and trying to, you know, make sacrifices so that their crops wouldn't suck that season. I mean, it, there's more going on here. There has to be, right? These guys are humans. They're not stupid. There's a reason why this stuff is going down the way it is going down, and archaeologists are not going to discover that because they're not looking. They don't care anyways. If they were to find some kind of a piece of evidence which would potentially change their story, they're not going to change the story. Like I already said, there's not going to be a paradigm shift. It's just not going to happen. It doesn't matter what they find. And I'm willing to bet, by the way, that there's probably other artifacts that were discovered in these mounds that we will never know about. Now that is supposition, right? Now that's me just spitballing, but I would not be surprised whatsoever if there's other stuff being found with these children that we aren't being told about. You know, we, we have to be careful for that stuff. We also have to watch out for people making stuff up. I understand that. But anyway, you know, you see stuff like this and it's like, that that's not the whole story. Dude, something else is going on here. 
I'm not saying they weren't sacrificed, uh, but we don't know for a fact if they were sacrificed. This article itself proves nothing, like literally. They had zero scientific evidence to back up the concept that they were sacrificed. For all we know, these children were just outright murdered for some reason or another. Perhaps these elongated skull children, maybe they're biologically elongated skull children. I don't know. Maybe they were. And maybe this particular group of people were sick of the elongated skull people and took them out. I don't know. You know, that, that's a possibility too. There's actually a little merit to that, by the way. It, that uh, I'm not going to get into that. But uh, but it's possible. I don't know. They, <laughs> it's, but, but it has to be a sacrifice for farming. That's the only explanation we can come to. Okay. So anyway, okay, I'll stop talking. That, but you see what they do in this stuff? So be careful when you, when you read these mainstream articles. I'm not saying that the information, the, the objective information is bad. You know, it's good to read about this stuff. Hey, we have a mound. We have dimensions for the mound. We have a body count. We have some biological notes on the devastation done to the bodies. Like we have good science here. What sucks is when we are force fed answers when nobody was even asking for them. Like right now, literally, I'm not even looking for an answer right now. I just want the evidence. These guys are already coming to conclusions and they're not even done digging. So, I mean, what, what are the chances really psychologically of these people finding other pieces of evidence that would contradict their original claim and then they changed their claim? Like, it's just not going to happen. You, they're, they're not doing that. Okay, anyway, so isn't that, isn't that interesting that they found a bunch of elongated skull people dead, maybe sacrificed? Either way, they were brutally executed for whatever purpose it was. I have no idea, but they're not playing around with these people. Like, uh, it really does make me wonder, like, uh, if at a certain point in time, because it does sound like it may have happened, to where, you know, the, the South Americans that were living down there potentially with other elongated people they were tired they were tired of the elongated skull people doing whatever the hell it was they were doing and maybe took them out i don't know i don't know i'm just saying i'm just throwing it out there i'm just trying to be like a mainstream scientist you know what i'm saying okay we're done all right <laughs>